10 years ago. Okay, then, guys, I need, I need quiet just for about two minutes and we'll have a chat about it. Just, just two minutes. I need to get this uh, server going. Monday night at 7.30 and of course this is the Talk and Talk show coming to you live from across and around the country and a great win for the Blues on uh, Saturday as we beat the old chip eaters 2-0. Big chip butty sandwich for me today on Saturday night. Couldn't believe it. Saw a nice little Stokey fan this morning. Give him loads. Don't you worry. Give him loads. I'll give them all loads around here. I might even go to the pub after this and give some more a few loads and all. <laughs> Welcome to Bible Sports. Here we go, guys. Of course, with our good friends at SAS Autos, uh, the Garrison Coffee Company, and of course, in conjunction with Accessi Blues. And look at him prompting me in the background. Boyle's, look at him. Boy, did you say Boyle Sports? <laughs> Boyle Sports, the principal sponsor of the Birmingham City Football Club, of course. And tonight with us, we have Mr. Robe. Hello, everybody. Hope you're all okay. Tonight. That's enough, that's enough, that's enough. Don't give too much, <laughs> don't give too much, don't give too much here, Mrs Brown. Good evening. <laughs> uh, the one and only Mr Sheen, Paul Hipkiss. Good evening, all. And the next was, of course, and still is, me. Good <laughs> evening. <laughs> but, of course, we are joined tonight with our very special guest, and we're honoured and pleased to have him on, on the Tilt and Talk show, the one we've been talking about for a very, very, very long time. Ladies and gents, girls and boys, the one and only Chris Burr. <laughs> <laughs> you had to say that nice thing about me there, didn't you? Yeah, of course. <laughs> How are you, buddy? I'm good, yes. I'm yeah, good. all right, man. All I'm right. Good. You're looking good. Wow, well, thanks. Wish my wife would tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> and you scored as well, Saturday. Not oh, yes. only I'm not your wife, then, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, I did. I scored on Saturday. Obviously, it was a bit disappointing. Never got the victory, but yeah. we got a point out at the end. We're actually in a bit of a difficult situation. We're sitting second bottom at this moment in time in the league. And what happens in Scotland, in the Scottish League, is if you're sitting second bottom, you're going to a playoff with the team that's in the league below you. Yeah. Oosh. And he's second as well. So we have to try and finish third bottom because that's our objective. Right. We've only got four league games left. But I believe we can do it. We've got we've got more home games than away games, so hopefully we can do. You can do it. Do you know why you can do it? Because Mister Lee Boy has done it. Because not only yeah. that, mate, you hit the Blues, and you know what the expectations are, right? And you can get yourselves out there, and you can do it. Yeah. Well, that, <laughs> now that's the thing because you're actually right in saying that because I told the group what I was in, but I'm command up group that I'm in with now that. I've been there. I know what it's like to experience a relegation battle. So hopefully, I can use my expertise in that sense and guide some. We've all been there. I think I might have been in about twenty-five or thirty by now. <laughs> <laughs> can't you sign Paul? Can't you sign Paul Cuddy's Chris before your next game? Just I know. In it, the last kick. Yeah. Ziggy. Yeah. Big Ziggy. Yeah. I know. Union, yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> I, I was we left it far too late there, but it was an amazing, amazing feeling. But in the same time, you know, we left it really, really late, didn't we? Yeah. I suppose it's one that Yeah, but what a day. What a day. Okay, so ahead of the show tonight then, ladies and gents, girls and boys, we've uh we've we've lost a duke this this week and uh, obviously uh the country is in a week of national mourning. Uh, his funeral will be on Saturday, as we all probably know, because it's uh, it's blazoned all over the news. Um, give respects to our royal family. That's uh, you know just part and parcel of, of of what we do. We're football fans, you know, and there are times when we just come together. So uh, condolences, obviously, to the Queen. You know what I mean? Being married seventy three years to the bloke that's that's a very 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 long time, and uh, and she's lost her husband and as a, a dad and a granddad and a great grandfather and. All the other relatives involved as well. So, uh, from the Tilton Talk Show, respects. Definitely, definitely, mm. definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, but having said that, we've gained another Duke, right? The Duke, <laughs> the Duke, King Duke <laughs> of Birmingham, King Duke of Birmingham. You know what, Paul? I tell you what, wow, what a goal that second one was as well. I mean, it's a pity yeah. that first one going really, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I love the first one as well. Roberts turning into David Beckham for a split second with that cross. <laughs> <as well. laughs> Yeah. Or, or turning into Chris Burke, sorry, as well, obviously, course, you know. Yeah. Whew, I'm, glad, <laughs> I'm glad you got that in. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, it was, um, great performance. And what a, what a difference. I mean, I, I said before we came on, didn't I, that sometimes football is just not that complicated. You know, it's it, the basics mm. are, are there and Bowyer's come in and he's just gone back to basics and he's got the best out of people and he's got them playing to their positions. They're giving their heart and soul for the shirt and the badge and that's all we ask for as fans, isn't it? No and, more. No more, Paul. We always say it probably almost every week. That's all we ask for. Now, yeah. at the end of that game, right, as, as you know, I live above the uh, the British Legion Club in Utah. Uh, and at the end of that game, uh, downstairs is uh, is the bar. And I do know that the guy that runs the bar and is also my landlord uh, is a massive Stoke fan. And I'm talking home and away every game. Now, I know that he was in that bar on Saturday afternoon. And I know that on 90 Minutes, I whack YouTube on the TV through the, uh, the, the the boom bar, through all the speakers, and put Keep Right on to the end of the road, loud and proud. <laughs> oh, oh, I don't know he heard it, and he ain't spoke to me since. <laughs> oh, <brilliant. laughs> yeah. I love it. Oh, cool, blimey. Uh, yeah. Of course, uh, coming out of COVID today, then lockdown seems to be easing, the pubs are opened. Uh, gardens only, as you know, but you know what? Does that pave the way to opening uh, stadiums for fans to start going back? It looks like it could. Uh, let's all be sensible <laughs> and uh, just hope, hope and pray that we can get back soon because I tell you what, it's, it's, it's literally been like somebody pulling one of your arms off and you've missed it that much, I'll be honest with you. Mm. Mm. What's it like around you? Yeah. Around about you then, Nick? Has, it, has your pub's opened? Uh... Lunch yes, morning. the ball open today is yeah, yeah. Sharon's back to work today. <clears throat> so, uh, oh, yeah. good, good, good. So she's not yeah. in the room to annoy you, no? No, not at all. <laughs> Brilliant. No. Why well, the drinks cabinet door is open. <laughs> <laughs> so, Chris, are you in? Are you in? Are you are you based in Kilmarnock now? Do you live there? I live just outside the Kilmarnock. Um, oh, okay, twenty-five minutes away. So, yeah. in the middle of like Glasgow and Kilmarnock. So, yeah, yeah. So I'm. I'm not that far, but I'm just, it's interesting to hear you saying is they're all buzzing that the pubs are open and stuff like that. We we don't have that yet. Of course, you don't. No, 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 no. no, we don't have that. I just... bet there's an exodus on the way down to England from Scotland. Right now, coming down south. Yeah, I bet you're even bringing some money with you. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say Scotland and beer. It's sort of like it does go it's together, doesn't it? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it must be difficult. Yes, but that's I think enough. my favourite. My favourite Scottish phrase of all time was one that was on TV. There's been a murder. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. That's I can't remember who did it. Who said it, Paul? Come on, you got the memory. That was Taggart. It was Taggart. There's been a murder. <laughs> it was Taggart, yeah. yeah. That was Paul Caddis. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. Like, I'm a bit euphoric today because three wins at home on the bounce. Clean sheet again. Yeah. You know, what, what yeah. more can you ask? What more can you want as a Birmingham City fan? Mm, mm, mm. You know, yeah, I just, yeah. I just, I'm, and, and Chris, this is the absolute truth. The lads here, and everybody will testify for this. We interviewed Lee Bowyer four weeks ago. Said to him, if the opportunity came back to manage Blues, 
would you take it? And he said, I'd never say never. And I said, see you in a week then, mate. Wow. Right? Yeah. He's my manager. I employed him, right? <laughs> Not I employed him, right? No I take every single credit for every goal, every pass, every performance and every win. Not the losses. I don't take any credit for them That's whatsever. It. But we're going to get relegated then, now, aren't we? And we've we've, we've yeah. got a manager as well that's making three three at the back work as well. Three five. Paul, two we've also got, also got mm. a manager that understands the fans. Mm. Yeah? yeah, even though the fans aren't yeah, there, too. right? He has an understanding of us. Mm. Yeah. Well, so Chris, he goes let's back. take it back. Yeah, Chris, let's take it back then, mate. So you joined us in 2011, obviously, just after we been relegated and won the Carling Cup and I mean that was a great season wasn't it the first season you was with us um, with Chris Hewton yeah it was you're right in saying that um, oh, I actually agreed in principle to sign for you uh, before Birmingham got relegated so okay. no matter what I was I was I was coming I'd already made the decision to leave Cardiff and mm. um, just I was listening because the championship finishes um I think before the Premier of the Premier League, and I was watching your game, and obviously getting relegated in the last game of the season. I think it was, wasn't it? Yeah, Tottenham. Yeah, yeah, it was horrible. But at the same time, I still got a great opportunity to come to a, a massive club at Birmingham, um, and I loved every single second of it. I'm not just saying that because I'm on this, but it took yeah. me, it took me to the next level. Um, I, obviously, I think probably a lot of Birmingham. Fans didn't know much about who Chris Burke was. Um, I wasn't a, a star name of a signing. I um, wasn't marquee or anything like that, but it took me uh, to the next level, certainly, especially that first season. Yeah. So the McLeish signed me, and then he left and went to Villa. Um, yeah. And then Chris Hutton. £10, £10 fine. It's a £10 fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's a swear oh, word. Did you say that word, am I not? No way. <laughs> no way. <laughs> well, anyway, Chris Hutton came in and, uh, yeah, no, it was, it was great for myself and for the group. And I think it, for the fans as well. Um, yep. I think we all connected very well that season. And mm. I could probably say that resonated the last game of the season when we get knocked out in the semi-final. Mm. I'm so appreciative of what, what we achieved that season with the European stuff, fitting that in with, obviously, the league. Um, even though we got beat, you know, you, you could have easily jeered and booed, but you didn't. You were so appreciative of how much effort the whole group and the fans put into that, that season. It was a terrific season, it was. It really was, I remember, yeah. I remember thinking the Blackpool semi, uh, Chris, I think another five minutes, I think we would have turned around, you know. Yeah, <coughs> It was by the Alamo at the end. It was, you know, it's non-stop. And I think we would have, you know, scored and turned it around, but it wasn't meant to be. Yeah, no, it wasn't. It yeah. was actually, that's twice Bump Blackpool have actually um, hurt me in the playoff. It happened at Cardiff when we could beat them in the final. And mm. obviously when we played them at uh, Birmingham and we were, we were on, uh, you're right in saying that, the longer the game went, we would have definitely got into that final. Yeah, yeah I think we would have. Yeah, yeah. But you left us with some, obviously, after you left as well, you left us with some great memories. I mean, some of your goals for us. Oh, you know, I just super. remember you oh, yeah. cutting, back on that, cutting back on that right foot and pinging it in the top corner with your left. You know, and, yeah. and obviously the one, at, the one at Brighton away sticks in my mind when we won 1-0. I think that was Robbo's debut. Um, mm. And we beat them 1-0 and you scored a great goal in that game. Um, and Forrest away, if I remember as well, it was a great goal. And, yeah. yeah, just so many great goals you scored for us, mate. So thanks for the mm. great memories as well. The memories, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. What was it like you, Chris, when when you know you know you you'd either ripped the wing up and, and and got that ball in for somebody else to put it, and everybody's everybody's seen Burke will tear you apart <laughs> again. Mm. Superb. It, it, it's, I'm not going to lie. There's times when you when that happens, you feel as if you're invincible. Yeah, you know, that's, that's the only feeling I would probably get to close to. Of like a Ronaldo and a Messi when somebody worships you that much, yeah, um, yeah, something, and that's what I felt like I was getting worshipped, and I would. Have... Oh, you were, you were though, you were. You were. Yeah. I feel like, it. Were, yeah. and still are, still are. <laughs> I actually had to hold back the tears sometimes, running back to the halfway line. <laughs> um, you know, Beautiful. because I just thought, man, this is amazing. I don't, yeah. want, I never want this to end. So, yeah, and no. that's why that's why programs like this are so important because we find out what the person is like rather oh, than just yeah. looking at you on a football field. Yeah, 
uh, and giving you that adoration. And it was because you know what? You deserved it, right? And if you didn't, we'd tell you because you know what we are, Brum is. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but, you know, to find out that you, you, were, you, you were literally fr- on the edge of verge of crying after scoring yeah. a goal. Or that's after, given you know, me goosebumps, you know, that's given me goosebumps. That's incredible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've got, I've got my, my standard statutory goosebumps, Chris, don't worry, yeah. I'll show you me. <laughs> yeah, and that's you know, brilliant. That, that's actually, fantastic. even even I remember the last game of the season, um, I got my little boy out and kicked, he kicked the ball into the goal. Oh, oh I remember that. Oh, that was yeah, super. Yeah, yeah. Then kick it. Yeah. Uh, I honestly, again, had to hold back the tears. It was I bet you did. Do you know what? I'll tell you something, Chris. I was crying. <laughs> I <laughs> promise you, mate. Look, he's going to score. He's going to score. Go <laughs> hey. my, boy, my boy still talks about it to this day. Yeah. He remember, remembers it. Yeah. Oh, he's a cheeky boy. one right enough. He's 12 years of age now, but, um, <laughs> yeah. you know, he still talks about it to this day because it's on YouTube and sometimes he goes back and watches it. Yeah, it was, mm. That was just the connection that I felt I had with the fans and the football club and, and doing that for my family as well, you know, and, and settling my kids in. Is that how old is your son now? He's how old? He's 12. 12, oh. I think. Great. What a memory. What a lovely memory for him, though. But the cheer he got was just enormous. Yeah, wasn't it? it was superb. It was beautiful. And I, do you know what? That's better, that's better than any goal that I scored. And it's so strange. You, know, you probably know that who are dads or whatever, or mm. your grandchildren. If that that's means so much more than me scoring one at Forest or the one at Brighton, as you said. Yeah. Uh, well, that my son just running all the way for the halfway line and kicking it into an open net and the fans cheering is just it's just an amazing, amazing feeling. We weren't just we didn't just cheer when we were willing him on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can flip that as well. I can flip that the other way around as a fan as well and say that, you know, the experience of my daughter, I've got I've got a ten year old daughter now. She went to her first game when she was seven. And the first goal she saw us score as well, you know, that, that feeling as a parent as well. Mm-hmm. Even though, you know, it's nothing really to do with me. I'm just a fan and I'm there with my daughter. Even mm-hmm. seeing my daughter see her first goal and start cheering was quite emotional as well, you know. Mm-hmm. And the first time she walked into St Andrews as well was a, an incredible moment as well. Yeah. I've, yeah. Got a, I've got a photo. My son's 35 years old now. I've got a photograph of him at his first game in the old uh, railway stand. Yeah. I mm-hmm. thought I better not take him up the, <laughs> on the back of the cop. <laughs> no, no, no. Albeit we did migrate to there, yeah. um, up the back of there, and then I've got a video of his daughter, which is my granddaughter, making her very first entrance into St Andrews and clicking that turnstile around, and it's 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 worth more than gold to me. Mm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So I've got I've got a thirteen year old, but he's got no interest now at the minute. He's just completely lost interest in football. He's going to his drawing. You're and his a bad father. Or... You're a bad father, Mark. Give him a, <laughs> give him a slap. <laughs> Here's Bo. She's oh, come to make her weekly appearance. There oh, she is. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Couple of early live oh. questions coming in for you, Chris, from our viewers. Jason, I'm, I'm I'm sorry, Paul. You. Could you stop me there, Paul? So I'm, I'm really sorry, but I've only got access to my phone tonight, so I won't be able to see any of the questions. Could okay. you keep your eye on? Dude. No yeah, problem. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. First, first, one I wanted, first one I wanted to ask, Jason McDonough's just asking, uh, where would Chris rate the Birmingham fans to compare to other clubs you played for? Oof. That, that's... You know what? I don't want to be disrespectful to No, no, no. That's fine. You know, which, which I think shows the respect that I have for you as well. Mm. Um, but it's hard not to say that they weren't the ones that, 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 that appreciated... <laughs> me on the pitch the most you know mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that that song that they had for me um, in the same turn I have to say that Cardiff City was the same you know they had a song for me as well had a swear word in it to be fair so I can't sing it to you <laughs> 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 but no they, they were ones as well so I'd say the two of them were fantastic towards me you know especially when you're a kid coming from Scotland and from Gla- or for Glasgow and going away from home and having to meet new people and for mm. for you as fans to warm, to give me that warmth and to make me feel comfortable in your in your city, um, yeah. it so much it so much easier. Not just for me, you don't understand. Not for me, it's my wife as well and, and my kids. Yeah. You know, they, yeah. they don't know anybody, but when they see the, myself on that pitch and the fans are warming to me, and it makes my life easier for my wife when I go home. You know, yeah. she's happier, and my kids are happier, and we wake wake up in the morning. Wanting to go to work and play for that football club, yeah, 
yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully that answers Jason's question. <laughs> goosebumps, goosebumps, goosebumps. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah definitely. Yeah. Yeah, good one here as well from um, from sorry, it was Michael Woods, I think, who asked it. He just said, "Ask Chris if he ever moved for a transfer free." Because Wikipedia suggests that you moved on at the end of your contract from each club that you was at. Is that right? Yeah, no, I've, he's right in saying mm-hmm. that. As um, research, um, yeah. I actually have never been bought, so I've always been <laughs> okay. a key transfer. I don't know. I, if that's a good, <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> well, Money wise, it's got to be got to be. Not, yeah. good, not a good thing. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, no, well, as, as, oh, you just don't know, do you? Yeah. No. You're unsure. No. What I can say is, um, it's probably a good um, pub quiz to have. Um, yeah. But, yeah. But at the, the same time, I'm just so appreciative that I got to, to do. It's not even a job that I have. I'm still, I'm still going and just playing my hobby, and I'm getting paid for it still. So I'm yeah. Going, yeah. 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 Really, like since the age of. What say twelve onwards? Obviously, mm. at the age of what seventeen, I've been I've not had to work a day in my life. Mm. Not mm. yet until the day I retire, I'm going to have to start mm. working. Yeah. Right. And was 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 Rangers was Rangers your club growing up as a child? Yeah, no, it was, but I was a little bit different from my own family because my mum and dad and my brother are Celtic fans. Okay, I bet, oh, that, was, okay. I bet that was good then. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I actually played for Celtic Boys Club. Um, oh, boys. Yeah, I played for Celtic first, and then, but back in the day, it's not like it was now with all the academies. You can only play for the one club and train mm. for the one club, etc. Um, back in my day, you could play for one club and go and train for many teams. You know, I went down south to Arsenal and Manchester United, Newcastle, Everton, and I still trained with all of them um, mm. while playing with Celtic and while training with Rangers, etc. So. I was very fortunate to get that different approach from each club and learn through different coaches and how they approach the game. So, and I think that made me made me the player that I am today because I'm mm. very adaptable. Okay. So, yeah, no, I was a Rangers fan, and I actually chose myself to go to Rangers just because I liked it better. It's nothing to be mm. because I supported them or anything like that. It's because I enjoyed the environment better. Um, yeah. it's just the bottom line I, and I'm a firm believer if you enjoy and you're happy then success comes you know you don't look mm. for success first I always believe that if you're happy and you've got a smile on your face and you enjoy doing what you're doing your passion for it then that's yeah. when success comes yeah mm. it's the old phrase yeah. isn't it? find a job you love and you'll never work a day in your life yeah. absolutely so right true. Paul, yeah. so true yeah. you know yeah, something though Chris you mentioned a lot of teams there where well, you came down south you mentioned a lot of teams there they're all up north to us. <laughs> oh, there you go. All the way. What, I know. Liverpool, Manchester, uh, Newcastle. They're all up north, mate. They're not down yeah. south. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I think, I, think Chris, I think Chris and Marlon King are two of the best free transfers we've ever had. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, crap. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I feel there's a lot of free transfers as well as there are other people. Mm. No? Stephen, Stephen Carr comes to mind. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Stephen well, we Carr. Can talk Stephen Carr when we do my one to 11. But... Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. what a player. Um, yeah. I mean, Robbo yeah. as well. Robbo. Robbo. Yeah. Simone as well. Um, you know, he was only signing for a month, wasn't he? Yeah. I know. I remember, <laughs> yeah. I remember, when, I remember yeah. when he stepped in the door, I, I was like, I was so shocked that he hadn't had a football club because it straight away, crazy. Well, it's crazy. When, he walked, when he walked in the door, he's not, not just presence, but he's got that charisma and personality which everybody wants in a changing room because it infects the group in a positive manner. And then when you go on the football field and you've got that talent and ability as well, I was like, this guy's got something. I can't believe he's not signed for anyone. I don't know if it was through choice or or through you know being unlucky or whatever. I, I do know that before that he went to America and he wanted to go and try it out there, but I didn't yeah. materialise. Mm-hmm. But we were very fortunate that it didn't for Birmingham because he was definitely an influence in the whole group and a, and a, and a, and a leader as well, I would say. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Mm. Got quite, yeah. A, yeah. Um, quite a few comments have come in. Um, I've got one here from uh, Paul Stern. He says, I totally agree, Paul. My son's first game was against Barnsley, courtesy of tickets I won from this show. He was seven. We travelled over 100 miles in, in, in every one of the malls was worth it seeing. So, so, like the, so like the proclaimers. 
<laughs> yeah, that's yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when he walked to this sort of stadium for the first time, priceless. He even met yeah, you I... all doing pie tests at half time. Oh, yeah, it's just that that feeling that yeah. you that you walk yeah. into the ground for the. I remember the first time I did it in '87 yeah. as well, my first game. But you know, seeing yeah. your own child do it though is a different sort of feeling to yourself. Yeah. I think. Oh, Pretty much so. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, mm. Stephen, Stephen Gill says, um, says Chris, who was your favourite player? Um, I'm guessing at Blues and why. Oh, I feel it difficult because there was so many good players that I played with and I was so fortunate enough. They took, as much as I say as I went to the next level, they took me to the next level, they players, mm. but yeah. I think the most influential one for me was Stephen Carr. Mm. I couldn't believe how good a footballer he was, you know, and I thought to myself as soon as I walked in the door and I trained with him, um, I knew that this was like a Premier League standard player, you know, I thought yeah. He shouldn't be playing in the championship. Oh, and I think no. back to the championship. No. I just thought, wow, this guy's behind me, you know, and that yeah. can benefit me. I've never played with someone, no disrespect to the players that I played for before uh, at right back, but Stephen Carr was just on another level. Different class. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Great player. I was Absolutely. just really unfor- I was that's one thing that I'm devastated about at Birmingham is that I never got a chance to play with him longer. Yeah, got injured, didn't they? Not long mm, into that season. Yeah. And then that was it from then on. Yeah. And it was such a shame because I knew we would have we did have a good partnership together, even the short time that we had together. Yeah. Mm. I learned so much from him. I remember on the training field what he did teach me a lot is when I played for Cardiff, I was I, I was still um, relatively, you know, I did like to keep the ball, I didn't lose the ball in certain areas and stuff, but he, was, he, he told me it was, it's all right to, to go backwards to attack again, you know, come back out and we'll go the other side. Um, and just simple things like that, mm. just make sure you keep the ball. And that's mm. that's where I, I learned from him because in the Premier League, you know, if you do lose the ball, you get hurt more, don't yeah. you? So he learned that as well through what he's experienced in his career. And I, I took that onto my game, um, playing for Birmingham. And that's what took me to the next level as well. There was sometimes when there was two men on me, as much as I would like to think that I could still beat the two men, that it's okay just to go back and go out the other side yeah. for the right mm. back to then do something. Because he, he would always tell me, you'll get the ball again, don't worry. Mm. And, yeah. and we created that. And I always remember it was a derby game. I think we played away to derby first game of the season. When yeah. I was next to him. And I tried to take that on board, what he told me. And I think we did. We were very unlucky not to win the, uh, to get anything from the game. I think we lost 2-1. But yeah. You, look back at the game there was times where I did take his advice on board in the game mm-hmm. yeah definitely right, I've just yeah. got fun memories of him going on his runs down that right flank yeah you know, right what, in front what of an him, engine on him yeah. the and it was like watching a, it was like a steam train running with the ball to his yeah. feet running built you know his upper body yeah. strength and his pace as well for a 34 35 year old it's amazing. incredible as well, wouldn't it? Yeah. Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Uh, Michael Wood says Chris is the best free transfer anyone's ever had. Whoa! <laughs> there you well, go. Let's... Only going soccer based in time. Nigel says, "What was it like playing under Alex McLeish?" Yeah, I'm allowed to say that name. Yeah, 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 yeah. We've got no <laughs> secrets here. No secrets here. I am. Um... If I'm honest, you know, he did a lot for my career. If you I don't know if you know this, but he was a manager at Rangers. Rangers, yeah. He was yeah, the one that gave him an opportunity, yeah. you know, into the first team. Um, I learned a lot from him mm-hmm. uh, in the training field and obviously as, as a, as make me grown into a man, really. Um, yeah. Because mm-hmm. that's what you have to do as a kid. You can have so much talent, as you see, with mm-hmm. young kids coming through and they might, play five good games and then just never be seen again. But he made sure that I didn't just play five games, that I was playing 15, 20. I was affecting seasons. And that he definitely made me turn into a man rather than a boy. So I loved working with him. And it was obviously him that signed me for Birmingham. So I think he has to take some credit for that as well. Um, mm. that maybe I wouldn't have signed for Birmingham if it wasn't for um, the guy from Alex McLeish. Mm. Yeah, I mean, obviously it always give us that day that we'll never forget winning the Carling yeah. Cup. Yeah, we'll talk incredible. Yeah, still, still yeah. text each other, uh, see how we're getting on, etc. So um, we still, we still keep in contact. So yeah, no, he did, he did great things. People obviously have other 
may, people might have um, other other doubts about him or whatever. But no, he did great things, Chris, without a doubt. Yeah, um, and then he spoiled every great thing that he did in in one fell swoop. He, he spoiled everything that he did in one. <laughs> and then when he came back to St Andrews. Um, he was manager of Nottingham Forest at the time. He got sacked the next morning. And I have never in my life, for all the hundreds and hundreds of games that I've been to at St Andrews, heard so much abuse hurled at one person for 90 minutes. Yeah. Was you he, playing for Forest then, Chris? No, you I, Forest? Actually, I actually scored two goals, I think, and got him the sack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did. Hard again. Oh, I'd shake your hand, sir. <laughs> <laughs> no, listen, it's a, bit, it's a result business game, isn't it? It, it is, matter. yeah. <laughs> that was a result. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it was 3-1 we won. Um, and I scored one with my left foot. And then, and then Nathan Redmond cut the ball back to me, and I think I might be scored from a, a tap in. I think I was, I think it was 3 1 or something like that. I definitely yeah. scored anyway, and we won. And I remember going to Scotland the day after, I think it was on the Sunday, and I was on the bus after this, after we training with Scotland, and somebody's text that shouted up the back, McLeish has just got, you've just got McLeish the sack. <laughs> <laughs> the, Could you hear the abuse on the pitch, Chris? No, I couldn't. No, sorry. You couldn't. It was I, I really had a massive roar though when it was like a bigger roar normally when we scored. You know, it was like a like a, a laughing roar, if you know what I mean. Like, yeah. Like a hatred roar. You know, you can get different yeah. roars, can't you? That's what it felt like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think we're being joined by our, uh, our chap on the fan cam. Mr. Yeah, I, I feel like I'm doing the walk of shame and coming in late. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, lads, family, family commitments and all that. Yeah, late, late Adam Wilkes, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> he thinks it's the late night, so. <laughs> <laughs> hey, all right. Hey, Are we all doing good, yeah? All good. Yeah, excellent. Well, yeah, yeah. All good. good wouldn't be good. Number one, after that result the weekend, and number two, we've got Chris Burke on tonight. Yeah. Who, who wouldn't be good tonight, mate? And number three, oh, I've got a small gin. <laughs> small gin. <laughs> well, you know, it was full early. You know, have a nice. Glad he said gin. <laughs> where's the where's the fruit and in, inside it? No. What? Yeah, you know, that's far too. That's far too posh for Nick. That is. Oh, is that rocky? Yeah. yeah. What's that, Paul? Oh, God. Oh, is it just fruit just inside that? your gin? I mean, he's drinking out of a pint glass. I know. <laughs> that makes it a cocktail. <laughs> cocktails what, up what, here. what a tramp. Nick, you need to be a bit more fancier than that, no? Go out with the tights. <laughs> <laughs> so who was the best, uh, uh, Chris, who's the best player you've ever played with in your whole career so far and against? Oh, that's so difficult to answer. Um I've been fortunate enough, especially in my time at Rangers, where I played with people that have won, you know, the Champions League, um, played in World Cup finals. Cool. You know, top, top players that I've played for, the likes of Barcelona and teams like that, Ajax at the time. So it's really difficult to say. It really is. Um, yeah. I was fortunate enough to play with the two, Ronald, Ronald and Frank De Boer. Yeah. Uh, just, and when they two came in the door, it was I learned so much from them. I remember standing out in the wing, as you do back in the day, where wingers just stood out in the touchline and go, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like a score. Yes, yeah. gone are the days of that now, obviously. Um, but I would just stand there. But he would be the first. He was ahead of his time and probably ahead. He was playing European style football, which we British culture didn't understand yet where the centre back would step out into the midfield step into the midfield area and he would just whip this ball with his left foot right across splitting the midfield of the opposition's midfield and give the ball to me um, you know and very rarely did you see a centre half stepping in and playing with the playing you know diagonal passes like that on the floor and there was a few times at the beginning where the, the ball would just go out of play and he would look at me as if to say you should be there and I was yeah. like <laughs> no, I should be there, but I'm sorry, I'm not like the Barcelona <laughs> style yet. Um, so eventually I got used to his game and I knew what he was doing when he stepped into midfield from the left centre-back area and he would just whip this ball with his left foot and disguise it very well. 
Um, and all I had to do was just stand in the touchline. And then, uh, and then once that happens, I've got a 1v1 situation with the left back. Um, so he was fantastic to play with. Arthur Newman was a left back as well, who uh, I learned so much from because he would speak to me in training and tell me when to go, when to spin, when to come short, when to lay off one touch, when to take a touch, when to take me on, when to cross the ball. Um, and then I learned from people like, you maybe not know, but there's somebody called Neil McCann, who was a yeah, white... Yeah, I remember him. Yeah, I remember him. So he would, he would always... He could beat a man without beating a man. So he would cross the ball like David Beckham-esque, where you don't have to, to go past him to get the ball in the box. Um, so I learned that from him as well. I was very fortunate to, to play with so many good players. Um, I've got Mikel Arteta as well, who's now the manager at Arsenal. He mm. played for Rangers. He was yeah. a person that could disguise passes and make me, you know, again, stand in the touchline. Um, it's very easy when you play for the one of the old firm because you're attacking all the time. So you don't really need to do much defending. You just stay out wide. And as long as you've got good midfielders that can pass you the ball very quickly, um, you can get a 1v1. So Mika, yeah. uh, I've got Barry Ferguson as well, who played for Birmingham. Yeah, yeah. Um, fantastic player. He was an um, he was an underrated player as well. Like uh, uh, he probably stayed long too long at Rangers because he could have probably kicked on in the Premier League as well. Um, yeah, he was a fantastic player. Um, a bomber. Yeah. Like you see, you look at work rate. Mm. You know, he worked harder than the ones that worked hard. If you know what I mean. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. You get players that say yeah, but he gives his all in training. You know, great attitude. But then he even raised the bar in that just because his desire to win football matches. Um, yeah. he always, I always felt as if he dominated the other opposition centre midfields. Very rarely did they get the better of him. Yeah, yeah, fabulous player. And who's and the best? Who's the best? We would you say was the sorry, sorry. No, Craig Bellamy. I was going to say was finally one that I learned a lot from. Yeah, I like to take little parts from each player when he first came into Cardiff. I learned so much of how to, how to probably live your life properly um, and prepare properly for matches. Um, he would do the ice baths. He would be always, when I came in, he was the first in the gym doing his doing his prehab work. Um, and then he would do one and one v one individual training sessions himself after training. Yeah. Um, so I learned that from him as well. And he was such a great player as well. You know, he did yeah. that through hard work and dedication. People don't see the extras that he does. That's why yeah. he is where he is and he gets the money he got. Yeah, he was a good, he was a very good player, Craig Bellamy. And oh, then what, it, what, what, let's go with left back. So he's the best left back you ever come up against then as a right winger? Oh. Um, I would probably say there was uh, Ashley Cole I played against Rangers. Yeah. Yeah, uh, we yeah. played in pre season, right? Uh, and I remember I nutmegged him and he still took the ball off me. I don't know how that... <laughs> to, this, to this day, I don't know how it happened. <laughs> um, I, I put a ball through his legs and I thought, yeah, I've got this. And he just went, no, you've not. And then he started the attack. He was another player that was just a tremendous player. Um, so difficult to get to go past. But again, he was ahead of his time. He was one of the modern day attacking left backs. Um, yeah. He was pushed push the right hand side more in a defensive role. Um, Chris, yeah. The right back but the right winger as well. Chris, I know I'm a latecomer, but I just want to jump in with a question if I may. Um right. what's been your most favourite debut for club or country? I have Good to question. say my country, man. I can't say no my country, can I? It's very <laughs> no. Plus, when you score two goals in your debut for your country, I can't know say my country, can I? Not, no, no. 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 <laughs> wow. Who was that against, Chris? Uh, we, played, we played Bulgaria and we won oh, 5-1. Yeah. Um, I think it's one of the only cups that Scotland have ever won, so I'm hoping that changes in the Euros there when we beat England. And, and if you had, <laughs> if you had oh, to he's just going to spoil it now. <laughs> if you had to pick a club debut, what would it be? A club debut? Again, it's going to be very difficult for me not to say my my, my first ever debut. Again, yeah. I scored, uh, I scored, I scored, I came on for Rangers. I, do you know what? I came on for Andre Kincelskis. Really? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm just a young 19 year old coming mm. off coming off the bench for you, and I, I've got like a superstar like Andre Kincelskis who's saying like good luck. And I come on within 90 seconds, I score. Mm. We've got um, we've got it's actually not hard for you to say. Uh, it's hard for me to say because 
what you're telling us is is the truth, mate. You know, yeah, just, yeah. That's mm. it. You know, mm. we're not bothered that it wasn't Birmingham City, right? No. Oh, yeah. If your heart, your football club was Rangers as a child, and you got to take off a player of that calibre, <laughs> the club that you loved as a kid, then that has got to be your defining moment, mate. Oh, that has got to be mm. up there with your child scoring that goal. It's got to be. Gotta be gotta yeah, be, yeah, gotta yeah. Be, and scoring be. two goals on your debut for your country. I mean, what a feeling that must have been. Mm. Yeah. You know what, though? All I can remember is I was so tired because yeah. we, we flew to Japan. <laughs> like, the season's finished on Saturday. We flew to Japan on a Sunday. I think we trained one day and then we played the next game. And I was thinking, I was on the bench because it was my first time international duty as a teenager. And the manager at that time was Walter Smith. Mm. So I was just thinking to myself, I was yawning on the bench, but I was trying to hide my yawns because I thought, <laughs> if, he <sees> me, <laughs> if he sees me yawning, I'm not coming on this pitch here. <laughs> so I was like hiding my yawning and stuff. So I came on and I scored two goals, which was, do you know what? Do you know what? I thought to myself, I thought, this is easy, this. But <laughs> <laughs> well, you was playing for Scotland. Oh. <laughs> oh. Uh, not, not many, not many get times. In, get I in. in. Four five against a team of Bulgaria. So yeah, yeah, no, yeah. no, no exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Think yeah. Uh, you know, don't you? When you're younger, you just think it's always going to come. Nah, take it for granted. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And yeah. He's, he's, he's good. Can I just get this one? In? This one's from uh, Mark Holland, and he's on. He's on YouTube. He says. I remember Chris being very intense on the pitch, but how chilled out is he on here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just for talk of football, though, isn't it? It's just natural. It's just, they love talking about the game. We've all got different opinions and emotions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But once you step over the Scottish and the ginger in me, when you step over that line, yeah. I'll do anything for one. Yeah. 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 I love winning, you know. I just, yeah. You know, and that I'll never give up mm. no matter if we're getting beat you know and there's only a second to go or, or we're winning I still want to score the next goal or whatever so mm. yeah no I yeah. might be killed here but it's just because I'm talking it's something that I'll, I've done for years so it's easy for me to talk yeah. but yeah. once I step yeah. into that field I'm sure you would all be the same maybe your emotions get a little bit yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely I'm a yeah. different animal so oh, yeah. I think that's good to have though. It's good to have that trait where you have to have that that ruthlessness about you and that that you know never say die attitude, that kill mm -hmm. um momentum in you when you step on the field because you don't really want the sort of player that's you know same, you know, laid back approach when they step onto the field. You do get that you still have to have that guile and composure, yeah, um, and calmness when you're in front of goal or defending a goal but at the same time you have to have that fire inside you don't you mm -hmm. yeah. yeah i think everyone it doesn't matter what you do you're 10 times more serious when you're doing your job aren't you than what you would be in your normal downtime that's it mm -hmm. yeah. you know yeah. so um but we've got a message coming in from last week's guest for you chris as well stephen caldwell we had on last week oh, um, yeah yeah okay. he's just said uh chris burt what a guy i miss him so much Yes. Yes. I'm talking about an emotional person. Stephen Caldwell is so emotional. Really? Yeah, I think he, yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, yeah. yeah you can't yeah. beat emotion though. It's brilliant. No, 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 I know. No, I know. No. He's not, you know what? Um, see him and Wade Elliott again. It was somebody that they they had already, you know, they have experienced Premiership football. They've had more experience than me in England, etc. So. They helped me again settle in at Birmingham. They were fantastic, and I forever call them two friends. So it's just unfortunate when you play football that you don't get to see your true friends as much as you would like, just because yeah. of logistics and geography, etc. Mm. You know, if I could, if Stephen Caldwell was was in this in Glasgow and Wade Elliott was in Glasgow, I would be seeing them nearly every day. You know, we'd be, yeah. It's just a shame that it happens like that because that's why I probably enjoyed my time at Birmingham. Played so well with Birmingham is because as soon as I left the training field, I still felt as if I was having fun. Mm. You know, I still felt as if I had my full, my family, my friends around me, and I include them in that. Mm. Yeah. Well. And be before, before the show as well, Chris, we have a message from Marlon King. Um, um, he said he said it was criminal that he didn't play in the Premier League. He said, uh, Berkey was my guy. Um, he said, I loved it. I loved scoring. I didn't mind Chris jumping on me because he was the lightest. <laughs> 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 you know, 
you know, as much as I put on my starting eleven, Marlon King is my my first choice on that on that sheet. You've just changed it. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you right now, I was going to tell you that, but Marlon King, I always say you're always good in your number nine. Mm. Great striker, isn't it? Great and, player. Yeah. Clinical. Do it now, then, Paul. And a nice chap. Should we do it now? Yeah, good link into the one to eleven. Yeah, go for it. Good link in, mate. Go for it, Chris. Hit us with your one to eleven, mate. All right, okay, yeah. Yeah, If you're ready, come on then. In goal, Marlon King. (laughs) (laughs) And and, and left back. (laughs) Yeah, so well, it's very difficult because again, played with really good players at Birmingham, and I hope I don't upset anyone, but you will. You will. They're all listening. (laughs) They're all watching. (laughs) You want to be a lot. If you want to be a coach or a manager one day, you have to make these decisions, right? Exactly. So this is what it is. So I had I was played with Bowes My Hill and I played with Butland, but I'm going to have to pick Randolph because I think, you know, yeah. for me, he was the most consistent. Um, obviously, um, Jack was, was a young kid and he was still learning his trade. But I just think the way Randolph um, played for us, um, he was a great character as well. And... You can just see with his career so far is how much he's um, developed as a player as well. And from coming from a team like Motherwell to Birmingham and then taking it on board so easily um, was great for me. So Randolph for me is definitely number one. Stephen Carr is obviously the obvious choice and he's my captain, my skipper, my leader inside the changing room and outside uh, and on the field. I can't speak highly enough of the man that... It probably helped me develop my play, my 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 playing career um, at Birmingham. You know, it's unfortunate because I could have picked Paul Cadis, um, and I loved playing with Paul Cadis as well. We probably had this similar connection that we would have had with me and Stephen Carr, with me and Paul Cadis, with me mm. playing inside, and basically we were playing with two wide players because I always think Paul Cadis was a wide player as well. We could also play midfield, but mm. we were definitely a threat down that right hand side. So. Unfortunately for Cadis and probably Jonathan Spector as well, that I've picked Stephen Carter. I don't think they could argue with me on that anyway. So they're on the no. bench. Um, Absolutely not. I've got the obvious one, I think, that maybe a lot of people, I don't know who's been on this show that have played with myself, is probably Stephen Colwell and, and Curtis Davis. I think that's a mm. two solid partnership. Ones that yeah. complement each other very well. Um you probably got best Stephen Colwell playing in the left hand side and Curtis playing in the, the right. The two of them have different qualities. I think Stephen was probably a bit more comfortable with the ball with his feet and playing out from the back and playing through the lines and starting to attack. And then you've got Curtis Davis, who's the you know, the no nonsense and very aerial presence was great. And they could also score you important goals from set plays, um, mm. which is very crucial. Um, two great guys as well. Um, and then in left back, it's very difficult because I played with Ridgewell and I thought Ridgewell was so talented, but I only played him for a little bit of a time, so I'm not going to include him in it. And I've, I've picked David, I've picked Murphy because I think Murphy's a terrific player again, a modern day left back who liked to get up and down, could assist and he could score goals. And if you yeah, can good. get full backs, they can do that, then you've always got a chance of winning football matches and playing attractive football. And Murphy's definitely one of them, a great guy. And unfortunately for him, I didn't get to play with him longer because of duty injury. And that's mm-hmm. and that's a shame because I've got Carr and Murphy who were fantastic players. Um, and I believe if they two were fit, no disrespect to the other ones, but that would have been influential from being in the championship to being in the Premier League. Yeah. And, it, and you try and you have to keep your best football players, um, especially uh, fullbacks as well. Murphy did his knee, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. I think he did, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, his career was cut short, sadly, by it, wasn't it? He had to retire yeah. quite young, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. It was such a shame. A nice guy as well. Again, someone that came from Scotland. I don't know if Alex McLeish actually maybe brought him in. Um, he came from Hibs. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. McLeish signed him. Yeah, yeah. He came mm. from Hibs and he, he, he done really well. Um, so, do you want me to say who I'm going to put on the wing? The wings? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm playing an old traditional 4-4-2 just because I think that's what everybody likes sometimes. <laughs> we don't com- we sometimes we complicate it a bit too much with different formations, but it's the players within the formations, really. Um, they're intelligent yep. enough not to play 4-4-2. They'll, they'll, they'll adapt and they'll be intelligent enough. 
So on the right hand side, obviously you're telling me I can't play myself. So <laughs> I'll just be the mascot or the fan. I'll just enjoy the match. So <laughs> it's a bit difficult because I think Nathan Redmond is probably better on the left hand side, but just because of his talent and I can not include him in it. Um, when they first burst onto the scene and they first trained with us, I thought, who's this kid? He's something special. Um, mm. I've never seen so. I, you know, I thought I had quick feet, but that boy has quick feet. He could just go past people so easily um, mm. and manipulate that ball and take so many touches before you even blink. Um, obviously, when I first came on, when he first came on the scene, he was still at the age. I was, he was developing and maybe <clears> making <throat> little bits of mistakes, and his end product wasn't is the way it should have been, but I still think he was influential and he still created a threat enough where defensive lines just dropped. So it created more space for other other players. So that's why I include Nathan in that. Yeah. And you can just see with his career that the the talent that he has. And he's even he's kicked on. Still again. doing it for Southampton, isn't he? Yep. He's, kicked yeah. Yeah. he's actually changed his position as well. He can play mm-hmm. up now. He can play mm-hmm. behind. He can play in the ten role, and that just shows sure, the mm. intelligent player that he is. Um, it was sad to see him go, but it's great to see him flourish. Um, mm. And then we've got another player on the left ha- hand side that would complement well with Murphy. I think when the two of them played well, two of them played together, they played really well. And it's John Bosajur. Um Again, it was a player that I didn't really know much of enough when I came into Birmingham. But I thought, yeah, this player is like Premier League standard. He is very, very good technically. A technician. Yeah. It was like, you know, the wide players, you get a lot of wide players that are inconsistent and they maybe lose the ball a lot and then they get taken off. Because they're the first ones that really get taken off, don't they? But Jean Bosch is always one that never really lost the ball. Again, a European style, um, European minded where mm. you give the ball up too easy. Mm. Um, and I learned a lot from him in that sense where you could tell that's why he's played at the hat in the Premier League and um, mm. that's the difference from playing the Championship in the Premier League where you don't give the ball up too easy um, and again it's unfortunate he went to Wigan when that when when I was still there and um, we, we would have liked to have kept him because again you want to try and keep your your best players at the football club to get into the Premier League but understandably that's just how it went and he moved to Wigan so yeah, yeah. Redmond on the right hand side and both of you on the left hand side and then mm. uh, two in the middle is probably going to be a little bit they would say a little bit light, but I do think with the two behind them and Colwell and Davis and Carr to an extent that they're solid enough to protect them, I would probably go Keith Fahey and Wade Elliott. Now, I was, yeah. I was going to put Wade Elliott yeah, in a little right bit. Um, yeah. I think um, Fahey, it was an underrated player for me. Absolutely, um, yeah. I, yeah, definitely. I, I really do. I, Again, it was a player that never gave the ball up easily. Um, just went about his business. He was a quiet leader. He did his talking on the pitch. He was a very unselfish footballer. And it's mm. very difficult sometimes to get that, especially mm. when you've played at a high level. Because when you play at a high level, the ego tends to be bigger. But for Keith, it wasn't that sense. Uh, I, I think he should have probably done himself, a, he done himself a little bit unjust and he could have gave himself a little bit of a bigger ego. Um, to kick on again, but Keith Fahey was definitely one that I enjoyed playing with. He was one that could play around the corner <coughs> over, over the top first time, and I think there was a few times in my career that he set me up to assist somebody or set me up for me to score. We just playing the ball in behind first time, and I just knew with his eyes and looking at him that he was going to play it, and I could trust him in that sense. Mm. Then we had Wade Elliott, who is a great friend of mine, but a fantastic footballer. Um, again, never gave the ball up easily. A real intelligent footballer. Thought about the game methodically very well. Um, was always thinking about how he can beat his opponent, and he would always think about the game in the game. So he would, in, in action, he would always think about the game. So if there's certain scenarios happening, you know, he would utilise that space. He wouldn't just play central midfield. If he thought he had to go deeper to get the ball, he would go deeper. If he thought he had to go higher, he had to go higher. And he would influence the, influence the one round about him as well. So he would influence Bosager, he would influence the forward in front of him. Mm-hmm. Um, so I love playing with Wade. Again, another unselfish player. And you could see yeah. a through pass as well. So, it looked like you had a great bond on the pitch during that time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Definitely, yeah. definitely. I think that's important though, a connection. I think mm. it's important to have connections with people um, to, to flourish. Um, mm. Especially for myself, my right, the right back, I like to have a connection with. And that's why I pick the players that I think have a connection with each other. Um, and the ones that, you know, when you step over that pitch and the guy next to you has got your back. Mm. And yeah. Mm. That's the guy next to me, he's got my back. Um, so then we go way up front the two up front and if this was probably the most difficult one because I was looking through it and I thought to myself God did Birmingham City have so many good attacking players oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. if there's one thing if we could just put all the attacking players on the pitch it would be great wouldn't it oh definitely <laughs> but, yeah um, and just leave Randolph to it uh, but <laughs> go 4-4-2 four, four, and I have to pick the ones that I think would score goals Um so I pick Zigic and Marlon King. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think they complement each other as well. I, again, I'll go firstly to Zigic. It was a misperception with him for me. <clears throat> a great guy, great character. Um, I thought he was very selfless as well. I think he, sometimes he was misconstrued on the football field just because of the way his manner was in the pitch. That was just his characteristic. Um and he complimented myself because I was a white player and I knew all the time that if I dinked it to the back post, he was there. Yeah, yeah. How many did you set up, Chris? When we beat Leeds 4-0 at Leeds, how many of them did you set up? Was it all of them? No, no, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> be I, said it for that. <laughs> yeah, I think, I don't know, I couldn't tell you. Maybe only one, maybe. Because I think Wade set one up. Um, I think Murphy maybe set one up for a deep cross. And I think possibly. I, do you remember Gomez, the central? Yeah, yeah, Mo- yeah, Mo- 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 Gomez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lot yeah. Of came, came from yeah. Dundee United. To again, he was a really good player, um, Morgan Gomez. Yeah. Um, he ratted about and maybe get booked a little bit too much because he always flew into a challenge. But hey, mm. we don't mind that. You know, sometimes you win the ball for your team and you got the park and score um, with that risk element. He definitely had that. I think he set one up that day. So I think it was four different assists. But I think. <laughs> I think Ziggy had a great day that day. No, but I knew. I always said to to to, to Big Zig, you know, before the game. Remember, you know, when I get to that byline or whatever, I'll I'll, do, I'll dink it to the back post and you'll be there. And he he, knew, he was always there for me, really. Um, mm-hmm. Even if I got it deeper, I would just. You can't miss it. him. <laughs> no, <laughs> I saw him jump once. How <laughs> uh, tall are you, Chris? Me? Oh, family. Yeah. Like, I'm probably shrinking as you go older, don't you? So I'm like five seven. Five ten. You're five, five seven. Ten? Uh, five seven. Five no, seven. Five, yeah, yeah. So sorry, we got to we got to Ziggy, yeah. So that that's yeah, and then yeah. So well, obviously, I played with. I could have included Adam Rooney, you know, who was again a, a great mm. squad player and one that always scored goals and asked of them. Mm. You know, mm. I could include um, Chris Wood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rooney, yeah. yeah. Anyone that was developing into a, a great prospect, and you yeah. can see the career that he's had now. Yeah, great um, journeyman, he, really. Yeah, yes, mm-hmm. again, when he was asked to, to go onto the field, they delivered and they scored goals. And um, great aerial presence. Mm-hmm. Um, but I have to go with Marlon King again. I'm not, I'm not just saying this guy, but Marlon, <laughs> for me, my partnership with him was just it was second to none. I've never ever had a connection with a striker so much in my career to this day. Um, as none's no more so than me, Marlon King. Um, mm. I just trusted him so much to hold up the ball. He always kept the ball. You know, when you get the strikers in the back, they go and you just don't know if he's going to hold it up. Yeah. Mm. I knew Marlon was holding that ball up. And he was a very unselfish footballer. But a striker that scored so many goals, but always was selfless in what he did. And mm. People would say, like, Chris Buck set up so many assists for people. But if you probably look back, the amount of assists that Marlon King gave me, you know, was second to none. The problem mm-hmm. because yeah. it's me running off him and him giving me the giving me the correct way to pass at the right time for me mm-hmm. to win and just naturally then go in and shoot a goal. It was incredible. You know, you get so many strikers and I've played with so many strikers myself that have scored a lot of goals in their, in their career, but they're selfish, you know, they'll turn and shoot when they shouldn't. But Marlon yeah. didn't like that. He would lay it off when he needed to lay it off. Yeah. Uh, a fantastic football. And again, so unfortunate with injury that he had to yeah. stop. Because mm, I yeah. Well, what, a team, what a team that is. And Marlon's living the dream in Zambia now. Zambia now, yeah. 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 
Yeah. He definitely is, man. He's got he's got too much land, that guy. Oh, no. <laughs> he's got a beautiful he's got a beautiful house as well, Chris. He took us on a guided tour on his phone. Yeah. Oh my lord! It's it just looks like one, it's like one of those millionaire pads you see on. You're living you know, like a king out there, yeah. he is. He's he is that. literally, yeah. Is. literally, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, no, that's a that's a that's a fantastic team, anyway. Thank you, and uh, you know, I'd love to reminisce and you know think back to just to think where we'd finish today with that team as well. Where oh, would we be? Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, oh. yeah. yeah. We it's such an enjoyable season. Yeah, it was. manager yeah. Paul. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh yeah, the manager as well, Chris, sorry, yeah, the manager. Oh, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, no, Carl's obviously my captain, and um, there's no doubt and question about that. I don't think anybody could argue with that either. Mm. Um, Chris Hutton is my manager, just because, again, when he came in, um, a great man manager, great human being as well, and I think when you're a great human being, um, it, 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 it helps you become an even greater manager. Um, a manager and coach, I would say, he coached as well. Um, yeah. And he definitely took my game to the next level, as I said. But I have to not just pick the manager. I know you might not think this is important, but to look internally, um, Nick Davis, the sports scientist, mm. helped me so much in my and developed my game. When I spoke about Nathan Redman, I've never seen him move his feet so fast. That's because of Nick Davis, you know, his 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 sessions before training and after training and the warm-up was the repetition of moving your feet quick um, doing the right prehab work and post-hab work. And he helped me go to the next level. Um, also, Paul Trollope as well. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah. Yeah. people always say, oh, I yeah. cut inside and I shoot my left foot. Um, that didn't just come naturally or instinct. That came through hard work and it came through practising. Um, after training, whether it was twice a week, three times a week, 15 minutes, and um, Paul yeah. Trollope would come and take me and he would do this repetition of just passing the ball back to me, taking a touch with my right foot, shooting my left foot and putting it in the bottom corner or the top corner or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so I have to add and include them in that. I can't just include Chris shooting. I have to include the team because mm -hmm. it was a team that um, developed us to the success that we had. Yeah, mm, yeah. Right. Should we go to a couple more live questions, if that's okay? Yeah, um, got, got, you got to go on then, Chris. I've got, I've got a couple. Yeah, um, uh, Nigel wants to say, Nigel wants to know who did you play under at um, Cardiff, uh, manager wise? I only played with one manager. It was Dave Jones. Dave Jones. Dave Jones, Dave Jones and um, he was the one that took me from Rangers to to Cardiff. Um, he actually came in and he said, listen, he was, again, another manager that was just more of a man manager, not a coach. He let his coaches do the coaching, but I thought he was a great man manager and he was great at um, player ID. You know, the, the, the recruitment was fantastic. Um, we would probably underachieve, though, if I'm honest. At Cardiff, we could, if you looked at the squad and the team that we had, we should have been in the Premier League. Mm -hmm. um, if you looked at it, you know, you had Chopra and Boffroyd up front. You had McPhail, you had Whittingham, you had Bellamy, you know, you had um, myself, you had, you yeah. know, Mark Hudson, you had, um, you know, David Marshall as well in goal. You know, there was many, many top quality players in that in that team and they just underachieved. But Dave Jones was a great man manager and left to delegate for the other coaches. And I remember when I first signed, he said to me, I don't care how bad you are in training as long as you're good for me this Saturday. Yeah, that's <laughs> and I would say, yeah. That's yeah. the yeah. manager thing, isn't it? <laughs> that's fair um, I don't care if you turn up five minutes before training, but as long as you deliver for me on Saturday. Yeah. Um, mm. I did turn up for five minutes and I did turn up for training, though. So. <laughs> <laughs> I know we touched on it earlier, but I know, I know you're at Killy and that and you did score on Saturday. Um, mm -hmm. Dave, to almost know, have you ever had a Killy pie? I have had a Kelly pie and it's lovely. You should, when this all finishes and whatever, you are more than welcome and I'll get these tickets and you can come to a Kilmarnock match. And yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. become my favourite team in Scotland. You can all have a Kelly pie and you can try so, it. What is a Kelly pie? What's a Kelly pie? What's a Kelly pie? What's what a Kelly it? pie? It's, it's, it's very well known for having the best pie in Glasgow or Ayrshire. Um, everybody who comes to a football match, well, back in the day, can't now, but hopefully it'll go over soon. 
that everybody went to the football match to get a Kelly pie, not just to go to the Kilmarnock match. If it was a Kelly Ooh. pie. So is it? Are you it's, in it? not, it's not haggis or anything like that. No, no, no. It's meat. Oh, right. It's it's not a You're all right. You'll like it. Don't worry. You'll like it. <laughs> We'll have to do yes. Pie Gate. We'll have to do Pie Gate Part Two. Yeah. Chris, 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 you, Chris Burke, are you a fan of the Balti Pie? The what? The Balti <laughs> Pie. <laughs> what pie? A Balti Pie. A Balti Pie. A Balti. You know, you, go, you know, like a Balti Curry. A Balti Pie. Like a Curry, Balti, a Balti oh, meat. That's a Curry Pie. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a Balti. You don't know this, guys. I'm an athlete. <laughs> and we are obviously look at us look at us look at Paul look at Nick Nick's drinking a gin and I'm drinking a water come on <laughs> <laughs> what he does you know is that I thought this would be vodka I'll bring back the water can you um, just touching on just touching on Jason McDonald's question earlier are you, is the plan to go into coaching after you finish playing Chris and, or management I would love to um but the, the only thing is, is that every man and his dog wants to do it who retire. Yeah, yeah. Thing. So I've always said that I want to do it the right way. I want to do all my badges. I want to get all the much experience as I want, as I can get. Um, I don't want to be giving anything to me just because of my name. I want it because I'm good at it. I do. I, you know, I want to do it the right way. So, yeah. But I, yeah. want to start, I want to start at a lower level and work my way up. I don't want to just step into a managing role or step into a coaching role where it's first team level. Or, yeah. You know, I want to start and I want to learn and develop because let's face it, I named a team there, but I think the new generation, it's different characters now, isn't it? It's a different yeah, yeah. Yeah. involved. So I have to learn their mind. You know, the kids, I need to learn the Generation Z, how yeah. they how to get the best out of them. Because mm. let's face it, to get the best out of the group that I just said, it's, it's quite easy, isn't it? You know, they mm. all want to, to step on that pitch and deliver. And sometimes you need to try and tap into young kids now or the ones that are learned. You have to just maybe give them a little push more. Or, and that's not saying that they can't give you more because they're probably more talented. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I've got a good one, here from, good one here from Matt Roberts as well. Any, any regrets from your time with Birmingham? So any regrets from your time with us at all? Not, not, not getting used to the Premier League. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Really, yeah, it was my dream as well as yours. <laughs> um, you, you are probably watched your team playing in the Premier League. I've actually never experienced it, and I, yeah, I, that was the closest I came. Yeah, to, Crazy. I still can't believe that. To be honest, yeah, can't believe never played in the Prem. Was you never linked with, like a, a you know an actual going to a club in well, the Prem? Do you want to hear the story? I don't know if you want to hear this. So, we do. Uh, oh, we do. you're not going to say that. We do. Turn him up. We please. do. What? No, no, no. Turn go on. Go on. No, no, go on. <laughs> <laughs> good, good night, Chris. <laughs> say goodbye. Um, <laughs> oh, no. I've got, so, um, got a strange feeling. When, when I was at Rangers, I went to go meet Martin O'Neill at Aston Villa. Oi. Oh, twice. <laughs> I agreed to him. I agreed to him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I agreed to him and everything. So I was going to play in the Premier League, but then I chose to stay at Rangers. Mm. Good call. Good choice. Good call. Yeah. Good. Phew. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting a bit weird. Should we do, uh, Chris? Chris, shall we do the U? <gasps> okay. Oh okay. yeah, yeah. Go on then. Get, so yeah, what we do second. now, Chris? We um we're going to play a clip now of of, a, of an ex Blues player speaking. Mm -hmm. The clue is that you played with him. Okay, so if you think you know who it is, just tell us the first letter of his surname. Okay, and then we'll let our viewers see if they can get it. All right, okay, right. First letter of his surname, right, okay. Okay, yeah. here we go. Oh. Hopefully. We are very pleased with the result. 3 0 is a good result, and we get three points, so we are very happy. What kind of a day was it today? It must have been quite a strange day playing against uh, Steve Cottrell when he's in the technical area next door. Of course, it was the one who got me, but we, now he's moved on and uh, we just have to keep walking on. And the only thing we thought about today is to win the game and get three points. And uh, we did that. So that interview is nothing to do with Blues, OK? So he's not, he's not, he wasn't playing for Blues at the time of that interview. interview. Yeah, yeah. Right. Any, right. Ideas? Any ideas? H. Yes. Oh, oh. 
Yeah. Whoa! Yeah, yeah, I'll you apart again. Chris, so he's, Chris so you're, you're, the, you're the first guest. You're the first guest we've ever had on. That's probably got it first first time. I think. Yeah, exactly. unless you're thinking, of, yeah. unless you're thinking of somebody else with H, obviously. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyone got any? Anyone I'll got just any, uh, any ideas? <laughs> <laughs> oh, apparently it's some um, steak and gravy is a uh, killy pie. Apparently, so I've been told. It's uh, what? Chris, steak, sorry. steak and gravy. I love that. Oh, it's like a meat. It's like a steak steak pie then. Yeah, yeah, but we gravy. Yeah. yeah. But we call it a different name. <laughs> yeah, we, we call it a meat pie, don't we? Meat pie. <laughs> 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 it's also, only one syllable as well. <laughs> yeah. It sounds better though, doesn't it? Steak yeah. and gravy. You also For call a pie. You also call mob the murder. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, no. oh. It's gonna be a murder. We're <laughs> <laughs> in Soli all we call it murder. Yeah. <laughs> Chris, Chris, you what? Chris, that, was accent, mate. that was a good Brummy accent, that was. It was, yeah. yeah it was. Yeah, thanks. Well, I've got friends for Bobby and still. Have you? Where did you, whereabouts did you live when you played for us? I uh, lived in Dickens Heath. Everyone lives in Dickens Heath when they play there now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they oh, do, yeah, yeah. I don't know yeah. how much pennies I've got, but it took me three months to find a house in Birmingham. Did yeah. it? I lived in, do you know, with the Radisson, the big, in the town centre, in the centre. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You had a Radisson yeah. Blue? I was in there for three months. Uh, so, right. Oh, yeah. And I was there when the riots were going on. So I turned up, same as the artist. <laughs> artist I love the little, love the little place, 10 minutes everywhere. And I come to this big, massive city where I'm stuck in a big, massive hotel, little roundabout. People are riding, smashing windows. <laughs> oh, yeah. Fear for my life. P- two people crashed into me in the space of three months when I got there. And I thought, what is happening here? <laughs> it's just home from home from Rangers, isn't it, Chris? <laughs> what? Wasn't it just home from home as it'd been at Rangers? Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, why people love, rioting. that's why I love the, That's why I love the city so much. I couldn't get yeah. <laughs> so home from home. <laughs> a lot Chris. of people are uh, having a go at this. So just to re, just to re repeat the clue, uh, Chris played with Chris Burke. Obviously played with this player. Yeah, His surname me. begins with H. So people are saying Hleb. It's not Hleb. It's not Hughes. So it's somebody beginning with H surname that played with. Uh, the play with Chris. Can yeah, we hear it again, Chris? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'll be listening to it again. Here we go. We are very pleased with the result. 3 0 is a good result, and we get three points, so we are very happy. What kind of a day was it today? It must have been quite a strange day playing against uh, Steve Cottrell when he's in the technical area next door. Of course, it was the one who got me, but we now he's moved on and. Uh, we just have to keep walking on and the only thing we thought about today is to win the game and get three points and um, we did that. Mm. Let's give him a few more give him a few more minutes and then Chris yes. can uh, you can tell us who you think it is if uh, no well, one gets it in the next couple of minutes. Well, so again? Give them a possession. Do you want me to tell them the possession? Go on then. That's yeah. sure enough. <laughs> <laughs> they might they might get it but they are. They might get it. Oh, go on then. With a striker. Yeah. Oh, okay. oh, there you go. There you go. He was a striker. This is and uh, best to Steve Cox. I hope you're feeling a lot better, mate, because we know that you've been struck down with that awful disease, oh, COVID. Yeah, and yeah, I just yeah. hope that you're uh, on the mend and uh, bouncing back as we'd all like. There you go. Mm, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Very well done to Dave Twine, who's just got it. Who was it? Do you want to tell us, Chris? It's Hunstrap. Who? How'd you say it? Jockstrap. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> no, no one on here can spell it either. Who's? It was Eric. Who's Eric Clare. Who's Clare? Who's Clare? Yeah, that was that. Who's That's the bloke. Who's yeah. Clare? Yeah, same bloke. Same bloke. Never heard of him. It's all right. When well, he had a bit of flair about him. Yeah, he's all right. Yeah, he played a few games, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. He was always he was always smiling. He looked like the Joker. Yeah. He's yeah. Before the goals, before the goals for us. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Did he did that. Yeah. 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 I was gonna ask you... I was gonna sorry Paul. I was gonna ask Chris, um, did you keep any shirts or memorabilia from your time at Blues? Yeah, I've got one in my well, I would say it was my study, my probably boys took over it as a Xbox room, but <laughs> <laughs> I've got the the European strip in my in my study frame. The, ye- oh. the yellow one. No, I bought you know what, I've not got the yellow one because I gave it to my brother. So I <laughs> I can't take it back off him, can I? It's about not. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be, I'd be yeah. around there now. I would. 
I've got I've got the blue one. I've got the blue one up the stairs, um, and I've got the picture of the team just below it. Lovely, nice, nice black. Uh, wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. Okay, it's Blues Rotherham on Sunday, twelve o'clock kickoff. Guys live on Sky, and your predictions, please, Chris Burke. I'll start with you. Mm-hmm. The mini cup final, this one. It is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who they playing? Sorry, I missed that. Rather, rather Rotherham. Rotherham. Oh, I've got a tough time over there playing um, two days' time after that, do not? Mm. One day's time, mm. like that. I, I, I fancy Birmingham to win that one. I, um, I think it'll be a close game, but I'm going to go 2-1 Birmingham. 2-1 to Blues, OK. Yep. Uh, Adam Wilkes? I'm going 2-0 Blues. Right out, oh, and Mark? Uh, I'm going to go 3-1 Blues. Chris? Uh, I'm going to keep up with tradition. I'm going to go for 2 1 Blues. And Paul? I'm going to go 2 0 Blues. Right. This is the truth. You ready? Mm-hmm. This morning I woke up. I must have just had a dream. I was convinced that I'd just read the newspaper <laughs> and Birmingham beat Stoke 6 2. All right. And there's me on the phone to Chris telling me that he's got to do tonight's show in the buff. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely true. I, so, I reckon we're gonna beat on Linda. Listen oh, to this. Christ. Six nil. Wow. Six nil. You heard it here we've first. Got a, we've got an agreement going on, Chris, that if we score six goals in a game, right. then Chris will do the show in the in the in the nod. Chris but Chris Brown, that is. Me. We'll do the show. Wow. In in the nod. Yeah, I hope it's just from there up. <laughs> so do we. No, you don't know what I'm wearing now. From there down. <laughs> <laughs> what do you make of our team nowadays, Chris? You're watching much of us. You're looking out for our results and I look out. The, I look out for the result. <laughs> I don't look at the team. I always look at the result. Um, I obviously seen you were in a, a bit of a, a bad place, um, and it looked as if you were not going to get out of it because I didn't see where you were going to get a victory. If I'm honest. Um, no, no, nobody did. We. I looked as if Rotherham was your saving grace, just because yeah. how how far away I'm they responsible. are. But sorry, I'm responsible. I oh. hired him. Yeah, 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 you hired him. Um, but it was a strange one because I don't know what he's thought about Karanka. I thought it would always be it would always have worked. Yeah. I don't know. We all did. I we think all we all thought at the all beginning all of the season he was probably the answer to our dreams. To be honest mm-hmm. with you, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, I think a lot of us were quite shocked that he actually came and then thought, mm. is that, this is a great I, signing. It just didn't work and we've moved on, that's it. Mm. Yeah, well, hopefully now it's turned, you know. Hopefully the manager gets the players that he wants and he gets to implement the style that he wants um, and and they can kick on from there and next season you can start challenging for the Premier League. He's also got the team playing how we want as well. We're important as well, you know. Mm-hmm. We're important because, like, <laughs> this just isn't this isn't a job to us. This is a life. Yeah. It is a life. You, you'll know we're Rangers, right? Mm-hmm. It is your life. Part of, part of your identity, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course it is. Anyway, ladies and gents, we're into the last 15 minutes of this show. And tonight we've had jock straps. Now, goodness gracious me, Mr. Adams. Uh, we also play at St. Andrews. Oh, okay. you see where this is going? I do. Uh, we have the accent. There's going to be a murder. I'm scared. <laughs> and of course, our theme tune, Keep Right On To The End Of The Road, was sung by the wonderful Harry Lauder, who also came from Scotland. So it's anything to do with Scotland and football, ladies and gentlemen. Anything to do with Scotland and football. I'll start you off with Glenn Hoddle. Ooh. Ooh. There's like a word association, Chris, yeah. where you know we just uh I'm trying to think. So you could say like um I don't know Alan John, Shearer for John uh, Alan Shears for something in a shed, yeah. for example. Yeah. So it's like a word association. Anything to do with Scotland and football. Oh, they're coming in already. Okay, so we got Scoot Dan. Oh, yeah. Who? Scoot Dan. Scoot, Scoot, Dan. Scoot Dan. Scoot Dan. Yeah, yeah. Georgie Haggis. Uh, Jota Strap, Jota Strap. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Puns, yeah. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Paul Haggis, uh, Scott Hogan. Oh, there's quite a few. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It gets have, you got, um, have you got Colin Doyle at, at Kilmarnock as well? Chris? Yeah. How's he doing? Yeah, he's playing. Is mm. he? Yeah? Yeah, because yeah, normally he's like a second, always a second goalkeeper, isn't he, everywhere he went? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. He's got his chance and he's, he's stepped up to the mark. 
So he's been playing. He's a great guy, great character. Mm-hmm. Great to have a, around uh, the place as well. Big presence. Um, he, I don't know if he'll actually... I think he might actually stay in Scotland. But he's he's liked it that much. He actually stays oh, in Edinburgh. Yeah. He actually mm-hmm. stays in Edinburgh, stays in Glasgow, really. So they always say... I think, Edinburgh, people I think Craig Courtney might be trying to get him on, actually. Who? Yeah. Craig, who, who probably come back contact with yourself I think uh, he's trying to get Carl, uh, Doyle on no, I'll mm. see him if he's won I'll see him oh, yeah, 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 yeah he's yeah, mentioned yeah, to yeah. him yeah yeah it'd yeah, be t- good to get Wade on as well Chris if we could at some stage Wade Elliot oh, yeah, Wade Elliot would be good yeah, yeah. yeah you want Wade right no problem yeah. Yeah, yeah, get Wade. Yeah. any more Chris any more <laughs> <laughs> Alex, Alex McLeish get him on please get him on you want McLeish yeah we want yeah, him yeah, yeah, we do I'll ask a gaffer if he can come on ask him yeah, we'll oh, do it. Yeah. We, we, we won't give you any tip on this, look. It's water under the bridge and that's it, you know what I mean? Yeah, um, I don't listen, think that'd be a great the guy, show, that would. The guy gave us one of our, the best days of our lives as well. The yeah. best, yeah, yeah. You know, the best, it was the best. Yeah, yeah. Right, any more, any more coming in, Brownie, because I can't see... Okay, can't so we got Harley Aberdeen. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Love that. Lauren, yeah, he oh, oh, he's no, a... No, no. I've, just... <laughs> I've, got, I've got the wiener, I've got the wiener, I've got the wiener. Lionel Nessie. Lionel Nessie. Oh, that's a bit harsh. <laughs> Lionel Nessie. <laughs> yeah, come on. Oh, come Nessie. On. Yeah. yeah, Nessie. Nessie. Nessie, Nessie, Nessie. Oh, that's brilliant. That yeah. Is. yeah, very good. Uh, Paul Haggis, Paul Haggis, Paul Haggis. A lot of Paul Haggises. Uh, and that's it so far. Fort William uh, Bell. What about, um, what about Craig Shortbread? Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. and that's ben Nevis Foster. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Paul Tatty. Robert, Robert the Steve Bruce. Oh, who's that? Who's that? Yeah. I, I, that played for Man City. Who? Ireland. Ireland. Oh, oh, Stephen, oh Ireland. Stephen, Stephen Ireland. Ireland. Yeah, yeah, Stephen yeah. Ireland. Stephen Ireland. Stephen Ireland. I like that. Yeah. Stephen Ireland. Yeah. Hadrian, Hadrian, Hadrian Mullins. Uh, Kenny, Kenny Burns Knight. <laughs> Chris, Christoph to Haggis. Haggis. <laughs> Gordon Strap on. Oh, crikey. <laughs> oh, God, no, Oh, God, that slipped in. I'll have to Craig, oh, what's the reason? Craig's just asking me to ask your thoughts on Shay Adams playing for Scotland, Chris. Yeah, no, good. I think he's been really promising since he's come in. And I worked with, obviously, Steve Clark, so he's his sort of player. And he'll definitely improve him as well. I don't know um, what you think about him, but... Um, I like him. He's, mm. um, he's energetic. He's, he looks as if he wants to always learn and take stuff on. Um, he, can, he can see a pass forward. That's what I like about him. He can he's back to goal, but he can turn. And if you see his first Scotland goal, he does exactly back to goal. Turns a player, gets a shot off and scores. Um, mm. Did all the work himself, which is good. Uh, so, no, it's, it's something that we need as well, especially going to the Euros. This is, the, this, this is the best team you've had for a while, isn't it? Yeah, if you look at our midfield, <laughs> our midfield is strong, you know. Yeah. Mm. You know, mm. Carl McGregor, we've got McGinn, we've got, you know, we've got somebody who plays for Rangers called Ryan Jack. He's injured just now, but we've got McTominay, who can play yeah. second half and central midfield. Uh, we've got Armstrong, who doesn't even play. You know, he's a substitute. That just shows you how strong our, our midfield is. Um, we've got Fraser as well on the wing, plays for Newcastle. We've got a lot of players that play in the Premier League. You've got Tierney, you've got Robertson, arguably the two best left-backs in the, in the yeah, Premier League. Definitely. Uh, um, mm. It's a shame, I think, Tierney's out to the end of the season. I hope he makes the Euros, because he's really, really important for us. Chris, yeah. would you ever come? Would you ever come um, come back down south if the chance arose? You know, for coaching or whatever, or are you just happy in Scotland now? For a fee, for a fee. No, I, <laughs> I would definitely come back to, to England to coach if I if I ever had the opportunity. I think if you want to become the best, you have to go to England. Um, it's no disrespect to Scotland, but it can only take you so far. And if you want to mm. broaden your horizons and and develop your own self as well as help develop. These talented players in that mm. definitely would consider, or not even consider, I would be in, in England because it would probably help me develop quicker. 
Mm. Would you love to get an interest in football? As my, in as in doing it? Who? My boys? Yeah, yeah. So my boys, 12, the one that scored the goal at the open net, he plays for Kamarnock. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. And then <laughs> he plays for under 14s. He's 08. And my other one, who's 9, he plays rugby and football. Uh, not for Kamarnock, mm. but he plays football as well. So they do love football. Um, probably more so my 12-year-old than my nine-year-old he's training three times a week get a game in the in the weekend as well so so he's intense in that sense mm. fantastic All right. yeah, cool. yeah. i'm just going to go through a few more nick just to keep you happy yeah please uh, well, i'll chuck my Kurt... first scotty dog down <laughs> curtis kilt monica oh, i've been trying to think of one with kilt well done monica of the glenn johnson <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is a good one. Two and doors down. Two. Oh. oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's clever. Yeah, that's a yeah. good one. Uh, Willie Sporran. Uh... He was a beast, wasn't he, in the middle, that Garoin and door? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. He was, yeah. Good player, good player. He was, he was a beast. Um, yeah. He was a presence that you need in the midfield sometimes, again. Someone that helped us play the way we wanted to play. Because we had that many attacking players that he would be the one that would sit and yeah. cover. And he would win aerial duels as well. He always used to put cream on his body before games. I don't know if Marlon told you this. No, no he didn't. Sorry, what on his body? Put <laughs> cream on. This, this magic cream on his body. It would be like a, a ball like this. Yeah, but, I'm like, I've, got a, I've got a lot of editing to do tomorrow. <laughs> I'm going for Joey Tartan. He would have cream inside and he would put his, put his whole body in Robbie selling cream and uh, it would stink though, it would stink. <laughs> but hey, maybe that's why I wanted the player to go away from him and they could keep his distance from his office. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, what type of cream? Not, not double cream? Was it? Oh, no, I don't know what it was, man. It was in a bottle with this, so you didn't know what it was. It was a magic oh, cream. That don't sound <laughs> right. That don't sound right. No. Uh, Anthony says what a fantastic guest Berkey has been superb oh, top, superb. top yeah. guy brilliant, brilliant mate yeah. Chris murdering you apart again <laughs> <laughs> that's my winner <laughs> what about the uh, what about the proclainers the proclainer the procainer sorry the proclainer <laughs> yeah <laughs> no, Chris Burke, will you be merging? We'll be merging you apart again. We just that one. Uh, Iron Brewster, Tommy, Sh- Tommy Shake, Shank Namuni, Gordon Strachan, clean version. Don't that. KY, who keeps doing these? Come oh. on, <laughs> <laughs> Brum City Bowlers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, How about you guys? Uh, Mull of Acox Green, and oh. I think, and I think that's about it, Nick. Right, your, Chris, right. one last one last quick question. What's your favourite goal you scored for us? Oh. In Maribor. Yeah. Yeah, probably, yeah. Yeah. yeah that. One right. question from me then, Chris, right? After that game, did you play in the Bruise game? The what game? Bruise, Bruise game. Bruise. Oh, Bruise. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What was it like in the dressing room when all the fans were singing out? Yeah, it was amazing. To be fair, unbelievable. Um, I think is that we were the only team to beat them since. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Firm yeah, 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 yeah. um, ground, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I thought we deserved to win as well. If I'm honest, it was yeah. not as if it was. It was a fluke. I thought we deserved to win. I, I remember though, it was not very nice because I think Ibanez had a bad head injury, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. Really, yeah. really nasty. Mm-hmm. Um, game stopped for a long time, so we were actually that took us back a bit. I think one of the, I think Gran and Dor maybe was the one that was a bit upset about it. Yeah, oh yeah, I remember, yeah, yeah. So mm-hmm. I actually took the whole group back a bit. Um and to then maybe do it for him in the sense as well as the fans. It helped and it spurred us on. Always yeah. remember that and coming in and obviously seeing the fans and it was an amazing feeling. It was it's hard to explain. It's hard to put any words. Yeah. How mm. you just appreciate you know the, what the fans bring to football. And I think it's even more so noticeable with this COVID situation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if I'm yeah, honest, seeing my career right now, this has been the worst year season in my career. It's just yeah. been so bleak. Um, yeah. Fans, you need when to- you see that Marab- uh, the, sorry, the Bruce video at the end and, and, and the Bruce supporters are clapping, the Blues fans, that to me is what football is. That is what football is. 
No matter who yeah. you are, one big family. One big family. Definitely. Yeah, goosebumps, yeah. goosebumps. Definitely. Well, Chris, I'm afraid we've run out of time. Mm. Oh, what what an absolute megastar of a guest we've had tonight, ladies thank and gentlemen. You, Chris you. Burke, ladies and gentlemen. Thank 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 you. You. Thanks, thanks for giving up your time, time mate. Chris. Oh, yeah, cheers, Chris. We'll keep in contact and keep in touch, all right? And I'll try yeah, too right. Alex okay. McLeish. Alex McLeish. Thank you. I'm going to see what he's going on, all right? Just send me an email of your demands. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. There could be a murder. <laughs> <laughs> that makes me giggle every time I hear it. <laughs> could be a murder. <laughs> oh dear, Chris, uh, do you want to say goodbye to everybody? Yeah, no, thanks, guys, for the memories. Um, obviously, you always speak about football player and the memories that you get from them, but I get great memories, and probably more so. From, from you guys and the people that are listening and then maybe the people that aren't listening just now. Um, he's made me not just a better football player, but he's made me a better human being. Oh, you're a superman. Well, I'll tell you what, though. From every single Birmingham City player, Dan, from every Birmingham City fan, thank you for those memories. I'll tell you what, because they stick in here and they stay in there oh. and they do. And when we saw that little child put that ball in the net, that made my season that made my season go on lad get it in get in uh, honestly it was superb it was brilliant right okay we've got to go so uh, unfortunately Adam we didn't get a great deal of time to talk to you tonight but never mind who? Uh, oh, no, I thought we'd be late <laughs> 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 your penance your punishment for coming in late <laughs> ladies and gentlemen so. thanks for all the work you do in the background Adam no problem at all and yeah. from Paul Hipkiss thank you very much good night all and from Mark um, good night, everyone. Stay safe. Have a good week. And from Mrs. Brown. Thank you. Good night. Have oh, good night. God bless. Take care. Keep right on. All the way. Rotherham next. Let's do this. Let's get six goals. Let's get him in the buff. Let's get, <laughs> let's get it done. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only legend, Chris Burke. Thank you, Chris. Woo, 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 woo. Thank you, guys.